Historically, I've always found that working with windows and view models inside of WPF can get really confusing. Controls seem to make sense, but windows are where things start to fall apart. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. I put up a couple of videos recently about having something like MVVM, but also using classes that act like a presenter to be able to control the different things that we have in our user interfaces. In those videos, I was showing a little bit of a messy situation with directly accessing controls and being able to port some things to view models. In this video, I want to close off on the splash screen series by describing how we could try to transform some of those interactions, especially when it comes to the window type control and how we can have MVVM or binding to take care of some of those things for us. If that sounds interesting. Remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's go check out this bright magenta splash screen one more time. All right, if you haven't seen my previous videos, I'll put a link right up at the top here. You can go check them out and come right back to this one. But what we're going to be doing is taking this very beautiful splash screen and trying to correct or improve upon some of the interactions that we have inside of this presenter class. To explain what was going on in this presenter class before, you'll notice I have a couple of spots where I have some commented code out, and I'm going to talk about some of these interactions that we used to have. What we used to do in our presenter was we would take in the splash window directly. So the splash screen presenter was having a direct reference or direct knowledge specifically about WPF controls. Now, in my personal opinion, when I'm designing user interfaces specifically at the presenter level, I do personally try to abstract away the idea that we are working with WPF. Now, it's not always the case. This is a goal of mine to be able to move in this direction, but I will cut corners here and there if it's going to mean that I can make progress on my application. I figured with the original splash screen we had, we could get away with directly accessing the window, but I wanted to move away from that. So you'll notice I have this interface here that's just called I splash screen, and this is the only thing that we're going to depend on for the splash screen itself but you'll notice the splash screen has a view model on it, right? So I splash screen is exposing the view model. This is very much like a WPF control exposing the data context. The data context on a WPF control is public, but it's also just an object. So we kind of lose that strong typing. With my interface specifically for the splash screen, I'm just exposing up the view model that I want to have instead of just an object data context. Now you'll notice that all that I'm using in here is the view model directly. So you might say, well, hey, Nick, why the heck aren't you just passing in the view model? Why did you pass in the whole I splash screen if really all that you wanted off of that was the view model itself? And to explain that very briefly, it's just the way that my dependency injection is working. If I only pass in the view model, there is nothing else that's going to resolve the actual window that we want. So the window never gets created and I'm just passing in a view model. So using the I splash screen, just the way my dependency injection container is set up is going to forcefully resolve the control as well. So I just wanted to give you that bit of background. This may look very different in your applications depending on how you're setting up dependency injection. And truly, if your dependency injection looks different than mine, you would probably not need to pass in the whole window itself in terms of the interface, but that's how mine is set up to do resolution. This is just a brief interruption to remind you that I do have courses available on Dome Train focused on C Sharp. So whether you're interested in getting started in C Sharp, looking for a little bit more of an intermediate course focused on object-oriented programming and some async programming, or are you just looking to update your refactoring skills and see some examples that we can walk through together, you can go ahead and check them out by visiting the links in the description and the comment below. Thanks, and back to the video. Like I said previously, if we scroll a little bit lower into the main method of this presenter, when we go to show the splash screen asynchronously, we used to be just calling stuff on the window to go show it, right? So you can see there's a window show, we were closing the window, so these are directly accessing WPF control pieces, right? Um, the progress reporter, this is just a small note, uh, the progress reporter needed to operate on the view model, so I'm just uh, doing that directly now um, because we don't have the whole splash window, that's okay. But the other thing right here was we were changing the window style directly on the control as well. And again, if we think about the code that's here, there's nothing that's technically wrong with it. This code worked. The fact that I was able to modify the control directly from the presenter, this code was functional, it served its purpose, we have a splash screen that can show for a period of time, allow background work to run, close after a period of time. It's all functional. So 
as I walk through this, I just want you to think that like, it's not a matter of being right or wrong, because at the end of the day, the software is working. We probably could have written tests on this in a reasonably straightforward way, but these are just design practices that if you want to start moving more in that direction, here's how you're able to do that. How do we get to the point where we can start getting away from things like show and close? Because that's what I want to talk about primarily in this video. This has been something that's stumped me for a long time in WPF. Every time I take a break from WPF and go back, I go, hey, how was it that I was able to get binding to work or have events and commands working to be able to show windows? Because in my opinion, binding a property on a control feels pretty straightforward, right? But when it comes to taking an action, like I want to go show a window, what am I supposed to bind to? Now, I'm going to walk through how I like to use commands and events in terms of the patterns and practices there. This might look different for you. There could be gaps in the way that I have them set up in mind, but this is just roughly how I like to approach it. So as I've kind of alluded to here, commands and events are going to be the thing that really help us with these close and show methods. And the way that I like to do this is that we have a command but there is also a corresponding event that goes along with it. So we're going to jump over to the view bottle next, but I wanted to show you kind of where we have a close command being called when we wanted to show, like we're asking to show the window up here and we're asking to close it. And I'm phrasing it that way, right on purpose. We're asking to do this from the view model. Hey, I'd like to go close this window. Okay. With that said, let's go look at the implementation of this. We jump over to the view model itself. You'll notice that I have three commands. I just talked about two, but we have three. One of them is close and one of them is open. These are the ones that we saw being called from the other spot on the view model. And the terminology that I like to use is when we say close command, this is going to be the view model requesting that we want to have something get closed and same with open. So you would say open command and that would call something that would request that we go open. If we look up here, you can see the open command is going to invoke this event called request open and the close command does request close. So you can see request open and close as events right here. But what the heck is this other one, right? This closing one. And this is just going to be something that flows in the opposite direction. So we'll see that in just a moment. But just to recap so far, we have a close and open command and they will call request open or request close. But who are they requesting it to and how is that going to work? So if we scroll up, this is my window class and you might go, oh, wait, hold on, Nick, you were talking about MVVM, you were talking about controls and view models and you have code behind. You have code behind, you're breaking rules, this must be bad. And I'm just gonna say, hey, look, this is how I like to do it. I'm not against code behind in my controls, but you'll notice that I'm just wiring things up. Truthfully, I'm just being able to kind of go between one context and another one. And I'm not trying to put business logic in here that's going to be making decisions about things. So all that I'm doing in the constructor of my window is I'm wiring up to the view model. When someone requests to close, we will go close. When someone requests to open, we will go show. There are ways that you can do this. If we start talking about the other direction, which is down here for on closing, you could hook up to the events on the control itself. And you could say, hey, when someone is uh, closing this window, so someone's pressed the X, right? We could do binding in the XAML. And there's, I, can't, I think it's called interactivity is the, is the namespace. Yeah, I believe it's that's what it's called. And you're able to basically wire up event handlers to commands. I don't like doing that because if you've watched my previous videos, I don't like putting more logic or setup into XAML. I know XAML is supposed to be able to give us these benefits, but I find the more stuff I put into XAML, the harder I find to test it and work around some things. So usually I shy away from stuff like that personal preference. That's my bias. But that's why having something like this where I'm just overriding the on closing and then invoking or I guess executing this closing command. That's my preference. The view or the window in this case hooks up to the request methods on the view model. And that way it can handle them and say, hey, look, someone's requesting to open will open. Someone's requesting to close will close. But the window itself is responsible for knowing when it is closing, right? There's literally a hook point here with this override to say, we are closing. What do we want to do? So when the window itself is closing, it will go tell the view model. So this is working the other direction. Hey, view model, 
I'm closing. So the closing command will get executed. When this happens, if I go back into the view model, the closing command is going to invoke this event. So these things flow the opposite direction from the original ones that we just looked at. When we're requesting, the view is going to handle it. And then when the view is doing the action and actually closing, it will go flow commands and events the other way. If we go look at who's hooked up to closing, well, if we go back to our splash presenter, if we go right up here, you can see that we're hooking up to that closing event right at the top. This used to be closing right on the control itself, but this is now closing on the view model. I wanted to kind of paint that picture to show you the direction that the commands and events are flowing one way and then back from the control itself the other way. That should cover show. It should cover close, right? Those are two things. I mentioned this part originally is now just kind of replaced because we have the view model directly, so nothing too fancy there. But this part's still a little bit weird because we were directly changing the window style. What I've done instead is conceptually, the way that I labeled this was on the view model, like when we were doing this on the window, on the view model, I just want to indicate, hey, look, we can close this window now. Like that's what this means. Once we reach the state, we're saying this thing is allowed to be closed because before that, we're still processing, right? That was the point of our splash screen. We'll hold it open while it's processing. Once it's done that background work, we can say, hey, look, you're free to close this thing. So conceptually, that's what it's doing. But what does it mean in practice? So let's go have a look back at our view model. We'll see this can close. Okay, so it has an on property changed hookup, uh, kind of a typical setup here. But you'll notice that it has one extra property changed. And that's because I'm exposing this window style can close. That means if someone can close, we will go on property change. So anyone listening to Windows style will get notified. Hey, look, someone changed can close. That means if Windows style is depending on can close, we must tell people listening to Windows style that things have changed. It's a little bit weird. You have to know that if you have dependent properties like this to go uh, call this extra on property changed. But that means now if we go to our XAML, you'll notice the window style in our window is now bound to window style on the view model. Jumping back to here, one other thing I wanted to call out. This is where um, levels of abstraction, at least in my opinion, get a little bit bizarre. I'm just going to explain this very briefly. But one thing I said at the very beginning was that I don't want my uh, presenter to have to know about WPF concepts, right? Now, one kind of thing that I am breaking a bit of a rule on back here is my view model is technically exposing things like window style. Very much means even if I hover my cursor over, you can see window style comes from system.windows.window style. Now, if I really want to continue to break apart that dependency and that level of abstraction, I could, and I very much have before in other applications, done two levels of view models. And this is going to sound a little bit ridiculous, but I just wanted to kind of mention it to give you some food for thought. If you truly want to make it such that your view model itself feels WPF agnostic, what you can do is have two levels of view models. And that way, at one level, this would not exist on this view model. But you could have a WPF specific view model and it would wrap this one. It would encapsulate it entirely, and that way it can subscribe to when the property has changed for can close, and it exposes this window style one. Now, what that means is that the splash presenter itself only cares about the non-WPF one. And why? Well, that's because it's only setting can close. It doesn't need to know about the window style. From its perspective, it's just saying, hey, you can close this thing. And then if you have a WPF wrapper around the view model itself, what you're able to do from there is be notified when the can close property changes and propagate even further, again, back up to this whole window that your window style has changed. What that means is that the window itself takes in a view model, which is a WPF specific view model. So window WPF view model inside of that is the more specific view model that is not WPF dependent. Is that overkill? A lot of the time, 
Yes. Like to be completely transparent a lot of the time, yes. But if you are in a position where you're trying to make user interfaces that are WPF agnostic, especially the business logic, you can introduce that extra level of separation. Just to recap, what we were able to do in this video so far is being able to get rid of a dependency on the splash window. So we'll get rid of that. We don't need to have show called and we don't need to have close called anymore because we're invoking or calling execute on the open and close commands on the view model. These two commands will go call request events. Those events have event handlers that are hooked up inside of the view itself, right? So if we go all the way up here, the window itself will hook up to these two things for the lifetime of the view model because they have the same lifetime the way I have these set up. They will call, close, and show respectively on the window itself. The other thing is on closing invokes or calls execute on closing commands, so flows things the exact opposite direction. And that means the presenter will eventually get this call because it's hooked up to that on the view model. We don't need this code anymore and we don't need to do uh, this part because now we can just say that we're all done and we can close. So if we go run this, we should see that we have all of our code still functioning. And there we have it, a beautiful splash screen flipped over the window style and it closes on its own. So it's still completely functional. We've just moved away to being able to hook up to the view model itself instead of the view. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.